Welcome to Overcoming Anxiety. I'm your host and author, Ron Ovitt, and I'm certainly glad that you're with us today. You know, today we're on lesson nine out of 13 uh, lessons that we're going to have. I've been saying 12 lessons, but I've actually put some more material together, so we'll probably stretch it to 13. Uh, but the good news is, is that uh, we're making progress here. We're talking about uh, overcoming anxiety. And today we're going to be talking about affirmations, uh, things that we need to repeat to ourselves, beliefs that uh, will help us regulate our anxiety. We want to overcome anxiety, and one way that we can do that is, is regulating it. Another way we can do that is by changing our mind, changing what we believe. A lot of our anxiety comes from what we believe what we believe about ourselves, what we believe about life. And one way to overcome the anxiety that constantly uh, hits us is to change some of those beliefs that are wrong and that are causing all this stress in our life. So let's pray and ask God to help us with this, that we might be able to uh, really conquer anxiety by the way we believe. So Father, I pray that you would just help us understand uh, today, Lord, how we can use positive affirmations, how we can use the right kind of thinking to change some of the anxiety that's going on in our life. Help us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today we're going to be talking about an, uh, anxiety and affirmations. Next week, we're going to talk about uh, how we can change some of that negative talk with God talk. What does God have to say about us in life? Well, how can we bring that into the picture? So this week and next week are going to be real powerful uh, toward the way that we're thinking. But let's review for a minute. How are you doing? You know, we've been talking about uh, emotional regulation. And one way that we talked about doing it is by being grounded. Uh, we start to get uh, upset and anxious and all of a sudden it, it might be a form of dissociation where we're, you know, we're wanting to get out there, fight, flight, or freeze. And we can ground ourselves, right? Some of the different techniques, you know, you know, feeling the weight of our body on one foot, then switching it to the other, looking for uh, things in a room that are certain color, uh, touching certain, you know, things and feeling the touch, you know, grounding, bringing us back back to now, getting into the present, instead of dissociating, coming back, giving us time to get the prefrontal cortex online. Another one we talked about was breathing, and, and how wonderful that we can do that. In fact, let's try it right now. Let's just take a moment and try, you know, two breaths here, okay? And I'll, I'll cause, I'll count it out in, in my mind and tell us when to breathe and not to breathe. So inhale and exhale. So let's try that right now. Let's inhale. Ready? Begin. Exhale. Can you feel that relaxing? Let's try it again. Breathe in. and breathe out. What a good way to start a program today, eh? And you know, God has given us this ability to just calm us down through breathing. And I hope you're practicing that. And I know many of you have told me that, you know, you've been doing the breathing and that it's working for you. Of course, my favorite is a you know, so if you're finding you're really stressed out, you know, use that, use that powerful breathing and really settle that, the gut where a lot of this stuff happens, settle that down and, and just breathe. And then we talked about relaxing. And so I hope that you've been able to try some of the different relaxing techniques. You know, we're going to talk about affirmations now. And then uh, we'll talk about God talk next week. And then we'll be talking about visualization. And then we'll get into the final two where we're talking about emotional relearning, changing emotionally what we believe, those, those things that we believe so strongly emotionally that are wrong, that are causing all this anxiety. How do we change our mind? How do we change that? And we're going to be talking about that. 
So you see here on page one, and if you don't have the notes, I encourage you to email me, ron at empowerministry.org. That's ron at empowerministry.org, and just ask for the notes and uh, ask for lesson nine. In fact, say, put me on an email list, and that way each week you'll get the notes uh, ahead of time, okay? But when we take what we're going to study in visualization and we take affirmations together, that really helps shape realizations, you know, new reality, a new reality. And one way to help change our negative self-talk is to use positive affirmations. We need to change our self-talk. We need to change the negative into the positive. And one way to do that is to have these affirmations that we rehearse over and over. I do that. I have one particular one that I use because there's something I'm trying to change in my life and I know I can do it. I know I want to do it. So I make an affirmation that I'm doing it, that I'm actually doing it. And, and I am doing it. And so this affirmation keeps me plugged in, keeps me thinking positive, keeps me doing it. And it really helps. It changes my mind. A lot of what we do is so habitual. It's so habitual. And, and, and what we do need to do is create a new habit of thinking, which will change the habit of our behavior. And so the nice thing about affirmations and why they work and one of the greatest tools we have, and yet we is underutilized, they work because, number one, they're easy to do. It only takes a few seconds to read an affirmation and repeat it, uh, right, in, and think about it in our mind. Uh, they're easy to believe. Uh, now, that's if you do it the way we're going to teach now. I don't believe in a magic wand. I believe that we need affirmations that make sense. Uh, that lead us into behavior, lead us into the direction we need to go. And, and the thing is, they work. And as you look at page one, you'll see here that uh, I've talked about the psychological theories uh, behind affirmation. It's called self-affirmation theory. And they've come up with all kinds of experiments and, and proof uh, that, that, you know, negative self-talk really causes problems. Well, positive self-talk can really help us correct a lot of things. And so, uh, you know, we're used to it. You know, we're used to negative self-talk all the time. We have negative affirmations that work with us all the time. And so we need to be careful. We need to be careful because we need to change our negative self-talk into positive self-talk. You know, we get a lot of this, I can't do it. Oh, things are always going wrong. You know, I'm no good. And all these negative affirmations that we say. And we need to really stop that and change it into a more positive affirmation. And there's been empirical studies that show a lot of this uh, stuff works. There's a whole area of psychology called positive psychology. And you can see some of the different uh, things that I've listed here. You know, it works with our physical behavior. It works with um, uh, health, decreasing health stress, uh, with uh, different kinds of um, health messages here that help us respond with our intention of getting better. Uh, academic achievement, uh, athletes use it. So anyways, affirmations have been proven to really bring some results. But, you know, let's talk again about negative affirmations, because that's where a lot of us are. That's where anxiety comes from. Anxiety comes from a lot of these negative things that we believe about ourselves and life. And we're constantly repeating them. We're constantly using them. And, and it becomes a habit. It's our norm. And we need to break that habit. Now, we've experienced them during our lifetime. Maybe there was a teacher that said, hey, sit down, you can't do that. Hey, you're no good at that. How many of us had coaches that said, we're no good at that kind of sport, why even try? Or we've had siblings or neighbors or other people that discouraged us from things or said things about us. We're too this or not enough of that. And, and these things have taken hold into our brain and we repeat them over and over. No one likes me. Uh, I'm not lovable. Uh, the undamaged goods. You know, we have these negative affirmations. And one thing I want to encourage us to do is to 
find these negative affirmations, start writing these down. When we find in our life something that we're starting to believe that's negative, we ought to write it down. And, and, and what we can do then is look at it and say, well, what's the opposite? Because, you know, if you're believing you're unlovable, it may be that some people in your life didn't love you the way they should. But that doesn't define you. The things that happen to us don't have to define us. God created you in love, and that's enough. You are lovable, even though we don't feel like it sometimes. And that's the trouble. A lot of these negative affirmations feel their body, their, their embodied beliefs, and we feel like they're true. But it's time that we took control and said that, listen, this doesn't have to be true in my life. And, and by doing these affirmations, soon our body will start picking up on it too. It will pick up on it too. And we can fight a lot of these negative things. Negative affirmations are strong and it will take a well thought out positive affirmation repeated many times to make a difference in our life. And we need to replace these negative affirmations with positive ones and repeat it over and over and over again. It takes time to change, but we've had plenty of time of believing these negative things, haven't we? It's time to start believing the positive. Well, let's look at the three different kinds of affirmations on page two here. There are three different kinds of affirmations out there. The first is be the believing something. And that's the one that really we're going to work a lot on is believing. Uh, what do we believe? But then there's also affirmations about achieving some. And that's a real popular one out there, the law of attraction. I, I can attract things to myself. And I want to combat that one a little bit. But then similar to that is receiving something. And I want to really look at that one because I think we can use affirmations to receive things and to achieve things if it's tied in with what we need to do. And so I'll talk about that in a few minutes. And, and then at the end, I'll give you a, a, some blank uh, things you can fill in the blank and create your own affirmations. And then next lesson, we'll actually get into some more how do we create positive affirmations based on uh, what God says and, and use the power of faith and affirmations together. That's the beauty. When you can take faith in, and put faith in God in what he says and, in what, and we change our beliefs, that's a powerful, powerful combination. Faith and, and truth. Faith and truth are powerful. And so that's what I want to encourage you to do. Well, let's look at the first one, believing something. Changing our personal thoughts, attitudes, and belief. It's one of the most underutilized affirmations. Most people just continue to cope uh, with their situation, never stopping to think that they can change. And, and you'll hear me say this over and over again. It's time to stop coping. I was talking to a physical therapist just a, a, a while ago. And we were talking about how hard it is for him to get some of his clients to do the things they need to do. And that's because, you know, we'd rather limp. We'd rather, you know, we're used, we're coping. At least we're getting from place A to B, even though it's limping, even though it's sore, we're coping and we think we're doing something. Coping and worrying are similar. When we worry, 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 we think we're doing something. But coping isn't doing anything to change the dynamic of that pain in that leg. Physical therapy and stretching and doing the things that they want you to do, that will bring about change. And likewise, doing these kind of things will bring about change. Worrying doesn't change anything, you see. And, and likewise, coping doesn't change because I'll tell you what, you've been coping for a while. And if we keep coping, I can guarantee you five years, 10 years from now, you'll still be coping. But why not change? Why not change? And that's what we want to do. We want to change. But you see, we get used to our normal. And, and we'll limp along and say, well, at least, at least I can get there. It isn't any worse. And change is scary. Change gets scary, but I'm telling you, it, change is what we need. 
And, and we need to start being positive about change because we can change. Things can get better. We don't have to be anxious. And so we can get there. And so the point is we need to start doing the things we need to do instead of just coping, okay? And now, there's often a strong desire for something different, but the idea of using affirmations to change our attitude and behavior, it's foreign to us. It seems too easy, more like a mantra with no power behind it. But the truth is there is power in personal behavioral affirmations. And when we combine it with faith and trust in what the Lord says, that's a powerful combination. Now, a believing affirmation is an affirmation where we affirm that we have a certain thought, belief, or attitude. For example, someone sent me this in a text. It says, in case no one told you uh, today you're beautiful, you're loved, you're needed, you are alive for a reason. Now, those affirmations, that was a sweet thing to send me. Those affirmations are reminders of qualities that we either are or become aware of or need to aspire to. And if I wasn't thinking personally in my own life about this, then I need to be thinking about it, right? That, hey, I am uh, beautiful. Now, whoa, that's a hard one for me to really swallow. <laughs> you know, I don't stand in front of the mirror and look and think, gee, I'm beautiful. But the fact is, I am good enough. I am good enough, and I need, to, I need to believe that. And instead, I walk around thinking that I'm not. And so when you read some of that, one way that you can tell if you've got a negative affirmation is when you hear positive ones, you reel back, right? You, you kind of say, oh, or you say, Psh. you know, that's not true, or you get scared. Oh, what if I believe that? Like something, you know, I can't think something good about myself. Yeah, I'll get this cosmic slap across the head saying, what, what's wrong with you? Quit bragging or quit this, you know? And so what happens here is that one way you can find out if you have negative affirmations, start reading some positive ones and see if they don't make sense to you. The fact is you might be believing the opposite. And maybe you do need to start thinking that, hey, you're beautiful, you know, that you're good enough and, and that you're loved. I, I, you know, I couldn't find that one that I was unconditionally loved. That's something I had to actually start repeating to myself until I started really understanding that it was true, that God loves me unconditionally, and that I'm needed, that I have a purpose, that I'm significant. These are core longings. These are things that we need in our life, and so many of us don't believe them, and they cause anxiety. And if we want to quit being anxious, we need to start believing the truth about ourselves, the good things about ourselves. And we can, we can. And, and so the question is, you know, what do you want to change? What do you want to start believing is true about yourself? You see, we get into these thinking ruts. This, these negative affirmations are a well-worn path, a well-worn path. And if you've ever been stuck in a rut, it's hard to get out of. It forces you to go down a road. And, and you know, when you go hiking, you see a path where thousands of 10,000s, maybe 100,000 people have walked down before. And it's easy to spot the path. You walk down where others have done it. I know I want to create a, a path, and sometimes that's what we need to do. We're going to find that, that we have a path already of these negative affirmations in our mind, and now we need to create a new path, or create a competing path with it. And so I had, a, a area, I had a, some land in, in Georgia, and I decided to make a path through it. And so I went out there and I cleared the area. Now little did I know that uh, I was... Uh, uh, you know, had poison ivy in the land. And so when I cleared it out, I got the worst case of poison ivy you've ever seen, man. My face, my eyes, my arms, my legs, you know. <laughs> Little did I know that I was stepping into all this poison ivy. But I cleared that out, put down mulch, put down plants, and then I started walking it. 
And, you know, it was uneven and everything. Uh, but as I walked and walked it for that whole summer, pretty soon you could tell it was a path. The mulch had settled down, the plants started growing, and pretty soon it was obvious to people that I had over that there was a path there and they could walk the path. And we created a new path. Well, that's what we need to do. We need to create a new thinking path, and it takes time. It takes time. We're going to habitually keep thinking of the other, and we need to challenge it, and pretty soon the brain will realize. And one way we'll do it is to take, here again, not just affirmations, but add visualization to it, and we'll do that in, in a couple weeks, and it's a powerful combination, and we can create these new pathways that will re reduce our anxiety because we're getting rid of all that negative thinking that's causing us to be anxious. When you're walking around thinking that you're, you're a broken, when you're walking around thinking that you're no good, that you can't do anything right, that people are against you, that's bound to cause anxiety. And the question would be, what is causing me to be anxious? Why do you do that? Ask yourself, what, is, what am I thinking that's making me so anxious? And write it down. And keep writing it down and writing it down until you've got a list. And then you start asking yourself, what am I believing there? And then you ask, what's the truth? And we'll get to that in a few minutes. But that's what, that's what we need to do. And that's where we call reflection on page three here. Reflection, asking yourself probing questions. We need to stop and realize what's going on. We need to realize what is going on here. Remember, if we can name it, we can tame it. And if we can start seeing what we're believing that's causing the anxiety, we can tame it, we can change it. And so some of the probing questions are when something happens when we're getting anxious, what am I feeling? Well, you say, I'm feeling anxious. Okay, I'm feeling anxious here. Then why am I so anxious? Why am I so bothered? What's going on? What happened? What triggered it? What, what, what's, what am I thinking here? What triggered it? Am I feeling a need of some kind? I mean, these are the things. And so as you look on page four, I have eight different kinds of questions here that you can actually ask yourself. First, and we said it already, what am I feeling? Well, we know that in this case, we're studying anxiety. We're saying, I'm feeling anxious. I'm really feeling anxious. And here again, we gave you a list of different words. There's all kinds of different degrees of anxiety, right? I feel worried. I feel stressed. I, I feel uncomfortable. You know, I feel, I feel really scared, right? Um, I'm afraid. You know, there's different degrees. What are you feeling? Name it. Name it. Try to be as accurate as you can. If thoughts come, let them come and go, but get back to what am I feel feeling? And, and you name it, okay? What is this feeling? And then you can go, why am I feeling this way? You know, what's going on that makes me feel this way? Has something happened, upset me? And it's nice if we can kind of see the triggers if we can kind of see what's going on. Did someone say something? Did someone challenge something? Am I afraid that something's going to happen because of something that just happened? Did I read something and all of a sudden my mind went thinking of the future and, and catastrophe? So what, what kind of triggered that? And then the question would be, when have I felt this way before? because there may be some clues there. Have I felt this way before? It's amazing, the fingerprints, or you might say the body prints, <laughs> that, that our emotions have. And they're very similar. And this particular feeling has a print, you might say, that goes throughout our body, right? And then and, and, and our body knows this. And, and when we start to say, well, when have I felt this way before? A lot of times it would take us to a memory. And there was another time when we felt this way because a lot of the fears we have are a result of something that made us afraid. Doesn't that make sense? I mean, why would we be afraid of something? You know, this, this would, well, let me use an example of something you drink. I remember I used to like to drink Mountain Dew and then Diet Mountain Dew, but I was a Mountain Dew freak, right? And I remember one hot summer day it's toward the end of the summer when the bees start coming out. 
I picked up my Mountain Dew uh, can, and as I put it to my mouth, I heard this bzzz, and I remember throwing it down, right? There was a bee that had went in there and wanted the Mountain Dew nectar, <laughs> you know? And you know how long it was before I could pick up a can without having to look? <laughs> now, when did a can become so frightening, a Mountain Dew become so frightening? When I experienced a bee in it, <laughs> okay? And so that association, remember, these are associations. I associated anxiety with Mountain Dew, and it took a while, and I still, every once in a while, get a little triggered where I have to look before I drink. And, and so that's how crazy our brain can get. And so a lot of times we ask ourselves, why am I thinking this way? You know, when did I feel this way before? And, and that may give us a hint. And so, you know, why am I thinking or believing? And, you know, you got to stay with that sometimes. Because things that cause us anxiety aren't, aren't things that we like to think about. But the fact is you're here now. And you can observe your own behavior, right? You can kind of draw away from it, be here in the moment, and say, what am I thinking? And so you're looking, so you don't have to be in the emotion to understand the emotion. It's just like being your own counselor. When I counsel someone and I ask someone to tell me about a, a, tr a horrific experience they had, and they're telling me about this horrible thing that they're going through, I'm not sitting there experiencing it and feeling all anxious. I'm, I'm more into empathy, right? I'm more into, oh, you know, listening and having empathy and, 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 you know, I may get some of the transference, but I'm not experiencing it like they did originally. And, you know, you can do that with yourself. You don't have to. You can ask yourself these questions and not have to be tripped up into all the anxiety. You can observe it and ask yourself, be your own detective. We need to be our own detective here. And so uh, you can ask yourself, what is going on? What happened? What was I believing? What am I thinking? And then what's the consequences of that belief? And if there's consequences, you know, if, if, I'm, if I'm broken, then the consequence is what? We throw broken things away. Whoa. That's kind of a scary thought. Maybe not so much as we're older now, but it was when we were a child. Child thinks, you know, I'm going to be discarded. I'm going to be abandoned. And that's a horrible, horrible thought to a child. It's to any of us, but to a child. Then the next question is, the consequences, what are the fearful results of the consequence? Well, if the consequences I'm going to be thrown away, then the fear is, I'm going to be annihilated, being thrown away, helpless, not able to take care of myself, I'm going to die. And you'll be amazed how many of the things that cause us anxiety jump right to that. You know, there's no halfway alarm. You know, this is alarm, uh, uh, I'm going to die. And, and I've changed a lot of my, my behavior because I finally got upset about it and said, I'm not going to die if I don't do this. I can change this. I'm not going to die. Get out of here. Leave me alone, Mr. Alarm. Turn it off. This is faulty wiring. This is faulty thinking. I don't have to listen to it. I'm not going to die. And you'll be surprised how a lot of our anxiety will go away when we finally realize it's a wrong assumption. I'm not going to die. And look on the page five here. Look on page five, right? You know, look on page five. We can find out the truth when we start to ask ourselves what's going on here. You know, I'm unlovable. Well, can you go ahead and think of a time when you were lovable? Someone must have loved you. Did someone ever love you? You know, and even if, even if they didn't, you can ask God if he loves you because you know the Bible says that he does love you. And asking God a lot of these things is where we can get the ultimate truth. Have you ever talked to God, Lord, what do you think about me? Lord, you say in your word that you love me. Is it true? Do you really love me? And then you wait. You wait. 
because God does love you. And Jesus said that if we ask for wisdom, he'll give it to us. And we can ask the Lord for this. Lord, what's causing all this anxiety? Lord, help me get a hold of this. Lord, help me really understand what's going on here. What am I believing that's causing all this? And you can get, what's the lie, Lord? What's the lie that I'm hanging on to here? And wait and reflect. Get ready to write it down because you won't remember. Write it down. And then you can challenge it. And so look at the middle of page five here. Look at some of these things, right? I am defective. The perceived consequent, defective things are disposed of. The presumed result, I will die. The other one, I'm unwanted. Unwanted things are discarded. I will become a non-being. I'm exposed. No one will like me. I will be unprotected and annihilated. These things seem exaggerated, but they're not. Anxiety assumes these things. That's where the anxiety is coming from. And the presumed result needs to be challenged with the opposite. We need to create affirmation like this. I am not going to die if, if I'm rejected. If I, if I failed at something, I'm not going to die. We need to change it. I remember uh, moving to Georgia. And when I moved there, I took vice presidency of a, of a mission organization. I went down because the organization I was with in Chicago had new leadership and it was time to move on. And, and I had volunteered with this mission organization and, and thought, hey, you know, I can really do some good things there. And, and we seemed to get along. And so I went down. But you know, after I got there, I, there was a different leadership style than I was used to. There was different kinds of things going on. They, they weren't wrong, but it, it wasn't, in, in my mind, the way they should be. I was called there to do a job, but I was being stopped from doing what I thought needed to be done. And, and that's okay, that's their prerogative. Uh, but after a while, I, I came to the conclusion this isn't working and uh, talked to the president and and said, not sure what to do. I said, oh, I don't feel I can quit because I felt I was called here. You know, uh, you'll have to fire me. And so he did. <laughs> I was fired. Now, that was demoralizing. I'd never been fired from a job before. I was at uh, around age, you know, 50 or so, where all of a sudden you're starting to think, what am I going to do next? And I started to panic and had anxiety over this and started to feel all this shame. And you know, I, I'm going down and, and all this negative stuff from the past are coming up, you're no good, you know, what's wrong with you? It just proves that, you know, you're, you're, you're off fluff and no substance, you know, all this kind of negative stuff. And then I remember praying and talking to the Lord about it and something came to my mind that changed everything. And that was, this just wasn't a good fit. That's what I would have told someone else. And that's where it came from. I was thinking, what would I tell someone else? And all of a sudden it came to me, this wasn't a good fit. And it wasn't. Now, I owned some of my behavior and I get that, but it wasn't a good fit. And that allowed me to say, well, then let's find something that is a good fit. This was a hiccup, okay? This was a wrong turn, get back on a road and proceed. And I was able to change. And, and frankly, this last part of my life has been the best time of my life. The change was wonderful because I was able to recognize and change my affirmation from that I'm no good, I'm a loser, to, hey, it wasn't a good fit. Do you see how that worked? And we need to sometimes change these presumed, I wasn't going to die. This wasn't the end of the world. It felt like it, and I had to overcome that. I had to stop that immobilization and move on, move on. And that's what these affirmations can do. When we believe the wrong things, it causes the wrong results. We need to change what we believe. And we're going to get into that more uh, next lesson when we talk about what God believes about us. Now. In his book, Winning the War of Your Mind, the author uses a three-part formula. Know the lie, replace the lie with the truth, and repeat it as a declaration over and over and over again. And uh, we'll be talking about that 
more next week because that's what we need to do. And here's some of the ones that he's written, and it's on page six. And I think it's good. He uses a combination of scripture and, and, and truth and, and what he needs to change. And listen to some of this. When I am stressed or in times of distress, I turn to God, not food. Now, this would be great for someone that's struggling with a food addiction, for example, comfort food, right? I, I turn to God, not food. I come to Jesus because he is what I really need. He is my strength, my fortress, and my refuge. And if you can see that that's true for you, and that's something you can do, then you have the right to repeat this and say this and believe it and start achieving it. And that's where faith comes in. You use faith in what God says and you step forward believing it and you start going toward it. Here's one. God is for me, so who can be against me? My God is working all things for my good. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus who loves me and gives me strength. And that's almost pure scripture. And we have a right to say that. It's true. It may not feel true at the moment. It may not feel true because of the repeated negativity in our life that we've been repeating over and over again. But that's okay. It doesn't matter what it feels like. We're talking about truth here, and we need to repeat this, and soon it will feel right because it is true. This one I like. Lust is not my master. And many people, we wrestle with this, right? Lust is not my master. God has redeemed me and given me pure thoughts. I will not look lustfully because I've made the, that covenant with my eyes and with my God who strengthens me. God is always faithful and when I am tempted will always provide a way out. Now that's a way to think about that. And you may think it's not true because I've been doing this so long and I don't know how to change. And what if I say this and it doesn't happen? Well, then you get back up. You don't change the truth because you fall. You get back up and you repeat it again. And the next time you go farther and you repeat it again. And that's how these affirmations work. These are tools to stop us. From, because, listen, coping continues to move on and on and on. And we've been coping with anxiety all our lives. And it's time to change the behavior and time to change the thinking. And we'll spend more time. Now, the second, time of, the second kind of affirmation that we talked about is receiving something. And I want to address this because this is probably one of the most popular ones out there. And it's a popular type that we can draw things to ourselves by the power of our words. The most popular theory of this is called law of attraction. Now, Jack Canfield writes, simply put, the law of attraction says that you attract into your life whatever you focus on. Whatever you give your energy and attention to will come to you. So if you stay focused on the good and positive things in your life, you automatically attract more good and positive things in your life. If you're not focused upon, if you're focused upon lack and negativity, then that is what will be attracted in your life. Well, I understand the power of focus. And, and I think he's right in that respect. What we focus on really will uh, dictate how, how our life is going. And so when you're focused on success, then hopefully you'll have a plan and you'll work the plan. Just say what, what I want to get across here is that it's not just saying, well, I'm going to be successful. You know, I'm going to be successful so I don't have to worry. You know, no. If I'm going to be successful, use that Use that kind of affirmation as motivation to do the things that are going to get you there. There's nothing wrong with motivation. There's nothing wrong with focusing that I want to be successful. I mean, I would assume any job you go into, you want to be successful. I mean, anything you want to achieve, you should want to be successful at it. And so focusing on that, there's nothing wrong with that. But just to say that I'm going to be a millionaire, and I'm going to attract money to myself, I don't think makes sense. Instead, if, if that's my focus, then I should have a plan that I'm working to, okay? And that's the point here. And Dr. Neil Farber, uh, 
He's, he believes, uh, he's written a whole book on, on this, Throw Away Your Vision, and he writes out 14 different things of why he thinks there's some real fallacy in just thinking of a magic wand mentality. And you can go ahead and read some of that if you want. And, and so, you know, I believe affirmations for receiving something works when we're affirming steps toward receiving what we are desiring. Keeping our focus on a goal will help us achieve it. For example, college degree. When I first went back to school, I was a little scared. It had been a while. Uh, you know, I was nervous. What if I fail? All that negative stuff that was in my life. I was full of anxiety at that time. And I was fearful. And so I decided to take just one course. But I wanted to focus on getting a college degree and then going to graduate school. And, that, and, and the trouble is that would be a, a, you know, a three, four, five year goal. And that's hard to think of sometimes. But you know how you did that, how I did that? I did it one course at a time. I did it one semester at a time. And so you use the large goal and then you focus on the immediate goal. And that's how a lot of these affirmations can work. You don't sit there and say, wow, well, attract a college degree. No, I, I, I will, I'm pursuing a college degree. I will make this. I can see myself as a college graduate. Therefore, I'll take the classes. I'll study hard. I'll put the time into it. And guess what? Over time, I'll get there. Why? Because I've motivated myself. And that kind of motivation will help when the tests are hard, when I don't feel like studying, when I have to give up something because I need to write a paper. See, that kind of motivation, that, that, that's, that kind of a, attraction, you might say, works because it's motivating me to do the work. And so I'm, I'm all for the kind of affirmations uh, that uh, want me to achieve something, as long as they're tied into and in receiving something, as long as they're tied into the behavior. And so let's look at page seven on receiving. We talked about believing and, and then receiving, and now let's talk about achieving. Because if we're gonna receive, we have to achieve, right? And so uh, this is where we assert, achieve a certain characteristic, position, project, accomplishment. Uh, you know, emotionally, it could be stating I'm at peace. Physically, it could be I have energy and I'm at my idea body weight. Accomplishment-wise, could be I, I am a CEO of a successful company. And there's nothing wrong with perceiving any of those things any of those things, I, it, that if you desire it and you want to achieve it, then that's good. But just to sit there and say, I'm gonna be a CEO of a company and thinking that that alone is gonna do it, isn't gonna do it. But if I have that desire and I start doing the things I need to do to become a CEO, then yes, that kind of affirmation will be a motivational thing. And so, um, I think it's important uh, that we, we tie in here then uh, what needs to be done. And so I have some rules, I rule, uh, rules here of receiving and achieving affirmations, okay? Now, number one, it must be realistic, and I'm on page seven here. Is it reachable? Is it something that I can eventually reach? Uh, and it may be a stretch goal, and it may be way out there. And that's okay if I think it's really possible. And, and you know, uh, I, I'm going to be a millionaire. Well, that is possible. We'll make plenty of money in our life if we work a job, and we can if we save, accumulate. It's amazing the opportunities we have in this country. And, and, but we need to ask ourselves, is it reachable? And that means, am, do I have a plan? You know, do I have a plan? Is there something I'm going to do to make it, you know, if I'm going to become a millionaire, and I, I'm using this because that's a common one out there, I will attract money to myself. Well, how are you going to make the first hundred thousand, <laughs> right? How are you going to make that first fifty thousand? Do I have a job that uh, you know, or do I have a product I'm going to sell? Is there something I'm going to do that's going to help me reach the first milestone? I mean, that's how we need to be thinking. Is it ownable? Is this something I really want? Who am I doing this for? Am I thinking, oh, I'm going to be a millionaire, then people will like me? <laughs> well, then there's something wrong with that. 
If you need to have a million dollars for people to like you, then, then your thinking is wrong. You're likable already. You're lovable already. And if you think that acquiring that is going to then all of a sudden make you lovable, it's not really going to work. It's not going to work. People may respect some of that, but you need to work on why you're believing you're not lovable. You already are lovable. And so uh, we need to ask yourself, why am I doing this? Is this something I, you know, that I'm doing for the right reason? Is it ownable? Or am I doing it for other people? Am I doing it because they want me to? Or maybe I'll achieve something they think I need to do. Why am I doing this? Is it measurable? You know, uh, you can say all you want, I'm going to achieve this goal, but what about the milestones? What about the, the things that I need to do to get there? Those are measurable. Am I achieving those? And so that will help us. And, and that's where, number four, can it have a progressive goal? Like I said, I'm going to be a marathon runner. You can picture that. That's great. Have you run your first 5K? <laughs> Are you doing a mile a day and then 10 miles and then a half a marathon? There's a progressive way to become a marathon runner. And so here again, having that focus is great. And you can use that as an, as an affirmation. But let's have the right kind of things that need to be done. Now on the bottom of page seven, there's another way of looking at it too. And a lot of times we get stuck in this what if and, and what is syndrome. And that can cause a lot of anxiety. Often we get stuck thinking uh, what could go wrong and we let it rule our life and we're all anxious over it. A great practice would be to discover our what if beliefs and change them into what what is uh, affirmations? Uh, Patty Ashley in her book, Shame Informed Therapy, shares the difference between our fears of what if that we let rule our life and what is that should instead. And she writes this. Um, she writes uh, this on page eight here. Let me get to it. Uh, what if? if? What if Teresa frequently worries about what other people think of her? She wonders if she should go to a party in the neighborhood. She starts to think about all the people she might see and what they might say to her that will trigger her feelings of being unlovable. You see that? That feeling of being unlovable, there's the negative affirmation. All right, that's what are we worried about that's usually tied into negative, I'm unlovable, okay? What if they say things behind her back? What if they think she is odd? Uh, she says, starts to go through these various what-if scenarios. Let's change that to a what is. Teresa is a good friend. She is enough. And the affirmation that says I'm being unlovable uh, would be challenged by I'm good enough. I'm good enough. I am lovable. I am lovable. Another one, John is getting a divorce. He wonders how the children will cope with the divorce and what they might think of him as a father. He goes through all the what ifs that could happen in his children's lives. What if they're depressed? What if they can't afford, he can't afford to take them on vacation? Well, what is? What is, John? What is? Well, what is is that he is a good father and he's doing the best he can. And so he needs to replace that what, what if with the what is. And that's another way of looking at affirmations here where I can start repeating the good truth about myself and get rid of the other ones. And so you might want to do that on page eight. I have a thing there. What are some of your what ifs? What are some of the things that you're worried about? Some of the things that you need to challenge in your own thinking. And so um, I put down on page eight there, dream big and commit yourself to actions. A good affirmation toward a big goal, but it must be tied into what you'll do that day. And so, for example, I'm committed to being healthy and will eat the right foods and exercise to make this happen. That's a great affirmation. This is much more action-oriented than I am healthy and full of energy. Now, you know, and you can say I am healthy and full of energy, but if you're not going to do the things that make you healthy, that, that's a waste of time. If it's a motivation to do the right things, then fine. But, you know, here's another one. Uh, you know, 
Um, I commit to being financially independent and will make the phone calls I need to make today to make it happen. You know, if you're in sales and that's the way you're going to be financially independent, then you know all about call reluctance. All of a sudden that cell phone or that regular phone becomes like a 500 pound weight and you can't lift it. You're, you're not doing the things you need to do. And so, you know, you can say I'm going to be successful, but if you don't make the phone calls, you don't set the appointments, you don't close the sales, you aren't successful. And so the better mantra would be, I'm going to be successful, motivation, and I'm going to, I commit myself to making the phone calls today, and that's the practical part in order to get there. And that's how, that's sometimes, frankly, I think the best money. It's better than saying I will draw money to myself. I'm a multi-millionaire. You won't draw. Now, that's a, here again, you can use that for motivation as long as you're doing the things you need to do. And likewise, uh, you know, a lot of these things that worry us, you know, we're body shamed, we feel bad about it. Well, if you want to do something about that, then, then you can say, you know, I'm healthy in that. You start an affirmation that will work you toward what you think you should be. But you don't do it for others. You're good enough. You do it to where you feel good enough. You know, and so affirmations, you know, are important. And so we need to, uh, you know, athletes take that. You know, whatever it is you want to accomplish, you can break into affirmations, okay? And we quit coping and we start to change. What are the things that are making you anxious? What would stop you from being anxious? Can you make an affirmation about that? Can you write out uh, some of the things you need to do? And, and then, you know, you would need to emotionally believe it. You need, you know, if you're going to start, stop worrying about what, you know, that, that you're broken goods, and you're going to start believing that I'm good enough, or that I'm lovable, that people, you know, that I am likable, and you're going to quit worrying about whether people like you or not, then you, you sometimes need to build a case for that. And I, I often use the lawyer example. You need to think like a lawyer, and so you bring in evidence. You find proof, right? You get witnesses. And so the question is, and you can see this on page 9, you know, who do you know that believes those things about you? What have you experienced that validate those things about you? You'll be surprised a lot of the negative things we believe about ourselves. If we were to look at the opposite and start to believe the positive things about ourselves, there is proof. I mean, you are loved. And if no one else in the world didn't love you, God loves you. And, and, and our past it doesn't have to define us. And a lot of us have had those negative things hammered into us. And the truth is we're sitting there with all this good in us, all this stuff that we can believe. And you know why I know that? Because you believe that about other people. And if you believe the good in other people, then why don't you believe the good in yourself? Why don't you believe the things about yourself that are true? Paul says, whatever things are true, are lovable, you know, all those things. Think on these things. And we need to think on those things. And, and so what do you know to be true? Who can support that? And then you know what? If it's something you really want, you know, I'm really struggling with this body image and I want to really believe I'm good enough and that I'm lovable, then guess what? Get a support group. Tell, tell a couple friends that, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this and I'm really going to believe this about myself. And, and if you catch me saying the wrong things, kindly correct me. Help me reach toward this goal. You know, do you think it's wrong that I believe this? Do you think that I could really believe this, that it's true about me? And you get their affirmation. You get their support. And then you visualize it. And like I said, we'll be talking about uh, visualization in a, in a couple lessons here. And, and that then causes you on page 10 to believe it in your, butter, in, in your body, in your body. And, and you know how you do that? You challenge your body. So when you start to believe the thing, when I first started saying I'm loved, by, I'm loved unconditionally, I felt I, I couldn't even say it out loud. I had it written out. I could not say it. That's how traumatic it was for me to believe that. I was taught so much to not to brag, not to feel good about yourself. I, I, I thought it was wrong that, that if, I, if I believed that about myself, someone would take it away. 
there, someone would just, and then I'd feel all that shame again. I was so shame-based. It was my norm. And I remember, I, am un I couldn't even say it, and I remember the first time I said it, I, I whispered. I whispered it. The next time I said it a little louder, then a little louder, then a little louder. Then I stood up and said it. And I started to believe in my body. And I, and I allowed the body to say, no, don't do it. I heard it. I felt it. But I challenged it. It's only my body. It's only a reaction. And I can, I can challenge that. Because if we ignore it, we're not going to believe it, right? And so I started to relax. I started to breathe and I started to breathe it into my body and let my body fill it and realize I wasn't going to die if I said I'm lovable. There wasn't going to be some cosmic thing that was going to banish me if I believed I was lovable. Someone wasn't going to snatch it away from me and I, and I had to, you know, believe that in my body. And so what can we do then to help the cement dry? Well, get the support, number one, and I'm on page 10 here in the middle of the page. Two, educate yourself. Start learning. Learning about uh, the things that you need to do. Start learning about what you want to believe about yourself. Start learning about these things. Become a student where you can become all that you need to do, right? Visualize yourself being happy and excited about change. Continue to practice affirmation and meditations that remind you of pressing on and motivate and encourage you and give you faith. Start doing that, you know, really live out the affirmation. And, and then you can create rewards uh, for yourself as you achieve these different milestones as you're moving toward it. And you repeat it, you repeat it, you repeat it. And so what I've got here on 10 and 11, et cetera, here are, are some fo a form that you can fill out. And, and the first is the affirmation. And then what do others believe about me? Things that I've done or times that has already affirmed this about me. Things I've read or heard or know that already prove this affirmation is true for me. Things I need to do in order to accomplish this affirmation. And then believing in the affirmation, and this is important, right on the middle of page 11. Believing in the affirmation, I commit myself to X percent of doing, and you write it down, to accomplish it. That's where the rubber hits the road. I'm going to be a millionaire. Well, I, I'm going to commit myself to 100 percent to do this today. And why I put that down is because it's easy to say 100 percent and not believe it. It's easy to say 100% because that's the gusto, right? I'm going to do it, but then gut check. Eh, I'm only going to halfway commit myself. I'd rather you be honest, say I'm going to commit myself to 20%. And then stop and think, well, why am I not committing? Maybe the goal is too big. Maybe I need to modify. Maybe I need to take baby steps. I don't necessarily have to get rid of the affirmation that I'm lovable. You know, that, that, and I'm going to start believing and acting out. I'm going to treat others lovable. I'm going to have more empathy. I'm going to this and that. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm going to commit myself to believing this, to doing the affirmations every day, to read what God says about me, to, to, to start looking for clues of how lovable I really am. I'm going to commit myself to doing that so I can really believe what God believes about me, you see. And so whatever affirmation it is, what, what are the things that you're going to do to accomplish it? You know, that's the point. And, and when we take the things that we're worried about, the things that we're anxious about, and we start to say, I, you know, I want to start correcting this. I want to start correcting the beliefs. I want to start correcting the negative behavior. I want to start correcting these things. Then I build affirmations around them. I build what I need to do to accomplish it, and it will get done. Now, next week, we're going to go into uh, some of the things that God believes about us. 
and where we can start believing these things and we can start saying them and we can start achieving the things we need to do. We can start living without this anxiety. We can start attacking it by believing the truth about ourselves and overcoming the anxiety in our lives. So let's commit ourselves to that. Father, I pray that you would speak to our hearts and that, Lord, we will start affirming the truth in our life, the truth about who we are, the truth about what we can do, the truth about where we're headed. And, and Lord, not let our past define us, not let our anxiety rule our life, but rather, Father, start to take a, a, a positive approach to overcome the anxiety. What is it, Lord, that's bothering us? What is it that we're believing that's causing all this anxiety in our life? Lord, help us to know it where we can change it. Help us to do those things that we need to do that will correct some of this anxiety that's in our life. And we pray this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. So I look forward to next time when we go over what does God believe us. Then we're going to talk about visualization. Then we're going to go into emotionally relearning what the real truth is. And we'll be seeing anxiety starting to flee from us.